Flashy greetings, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, especially, um, my name is Fizzy. I'm a passionate ocean enthusiast and conservationist. I've been working in the dive tourism industry for 10 years now. And first and foremost, I want to say sorry about this whole crazy hair situation. I've just come out from the ocean and um, until I give it a good wash, it's all going to get all frizzed up. In this video today, I'm going to talk to you about the three things that I think are important for you to know and understand if you want to get dive certified. First, let's talk about minimum requirements. There are a list of things that you really have to meet before you even begin training. And a lot of the dive organizations around the world um, will enforce that you need to be a minimum of 10 years old before you are able to be certified as a scuba diver. This age range is slightly between 8, 10 and 12 depending on the organization you sign up with as well as the actual dive course that you go for. There are some courses that don't give you certifications, more like a try dive and they might allow 8 year olds to start. So if you're thinking of uh, getting your children certified, for example, this is an element that you need to check about the age requirement. And they would have had to have their 10th birthday before they start any parts of the training. There are no maximum age requirements. So any of you who's like thinking you're too old, there's none of that. You, there are no maximum age limits, but it then ties on to the second aspect of the minimum requirements that I'm going to talk about. So if you've met the minimum age requirements, the next aspect is that you need to meet the minimum health requirements. If you'd like to scuba dive in general, you need to be fit uh, and healthy. Uh, and there's usually a list of questions, a form that your dive professional or dive agency will provide you before signing you up for the course uh, to ask you about all your pre-existing medical health conditions and your history and so on. In general, you should be able to answer quite positively about your health and well-being um, and only then can the training begin, especially the in-water part. But if, let's say you do have a pre-existing medical condition that maybe uh, come up in the questionnaire and makes it a bit tricky for you to start the training, it's, it's not a be-all, end-all matter. What happens then is you can actually go back to your licensed medical practitioner and have a discussion with your doctor to see that how you can manage diving uh, with the condition that you have. If your doctor says that yes, you can still dive provided you do certain steps or take certain precautions and indicate that in a letter, um, then that can be brought back to your dive professional or dive center in order to then um, talk about uh, your training in general to get you dive certified. I do need to mention and note though that there are certain medical conditions that may be serious enough where it inhibits uh, your ability to experience scuba diving entirely. Um, it might be, you know, it might make you feel a bit bummed, but at the end of the day, it is about your health and your well-being. Uh, so please listen to the advice of your dive professional and your dive center, as well as your medical practitioner. You've met the minimum age requirements, you've met the health requirements, you're generally fit, you're healthy, you're eager to go, your doctor says, yes, you can dive, you move on to the next minimum requirement segment. And this is your watermanship abilities. Obviously, when you're scuba diving, there are certain risks involved, especially when it comes to the ocean. <laughs> yeah, as deep, deep waters. I mean, you don't want to keep just diving in water where you can stand in. That's just, you might as well go in a pool, right? So in order to be able to certify people, your dive professional and your training agency needs to see that you are able to handle yourself in water too deep to stand in. And they do this generally in two ways. The first, is they're gonna make you swim uh, a distance of 200 meters without stopping and without using any aids such as flotation devices or fins and so on. Yeah, so you have to be able to swim. You don't have to be an Olympic swimmer and go super fast. You just have to show that you're able to swim and not panic when your feet can't touch the bottom of the ocean, all right? The next thing they'll make you do is test you on your flotation skill. And that's a 10 minute float test. Um, 
and in the 10 minute float test you can do you can do it in whatever way that makes you feel comfortable you can lie on your back and just float and relax get a tan whilst you're at it you can also do water trading whatever it is as long as you're floating at the surface for 10 minutes straight I uh, do need to note also that if you're unable to do the 200 meter swim uh, just in general then the you can still use some aids and that's uh, stuff like you are allowed to put on a fin, snorkel and a mask but then you're asked to swim a, a bigger distance and that's 300 meters instead of 200 meters. That's a general requirement uh, just uh, across all the organizations but this is a no, how do I say it, you can't skip it at all. You must do it in order to get dive certified. Obviously again there are different levels of certifications depending on which organization you've signed up with. If you take one of the slightly lower level ones instead of just a scuba, scuba diver, open water diver course, um, then you might be able to only do just the 10 minute float. So if you're not very a very strong swimmer, if you're not very confident in deep water, I recommend that you go get some swim lessons or swim classes, some basic general classes, survival skills in deep water, in a swimming pool. And once you're confident with that and confident with your ability, you can then sign up for your, your scuba diving course. Okay, now we move on to the second thing I hope I can help you understand. I get these questions asked a lot, especially by people who have started their research into getting dive certified. Uh, they look into dive shop websites and destinations or they talk to friends who are already certified and they start seeing these different acronyms like BADI and SDI. Uh, like certain dive shops are saying the SDI, but my friend was certified with BADI. What's the difference? Um, in general, there's actually no difference. There's multiple organizations like BADI, SDI, BSEC, SSI, CMAS. There's just different organizations, some of them rooted in different, you know, um, that were founded in different parts of the world, that are all still meeting the same global ISO standards for recreational diving activities. What that means is, is these organizations are just coming up with the framework, training framework to, for someone to get dive certified and the training modules and uh, the materials and they also manage the training of the instructors that will be delivering the courses to you and they maintain the quality assurance and so on and so forth and the licensing of the dive centers that you will be signing up to. Um, but once you sign up for a dive course, be it PADI or SSI, you will be taught the same skills in general because they meet this particular set of ISOs for someone to be able to go uh, and dive fairly independently with a buddy uh, in open waters, right? And ultimately, when you do get certified, all these organizations, as long as they're internationally recognized and following those ISO standards, your license are just going to be accepted anywhere around the world. Doesn't matter if you're SSI going suddenly to Tonga or your paddy and diving in Fiji, for example, or in Malaysia doesn't matter, most dive centers will then just recognize the fact that you have been licensed by a recognized institution. Okay, um, so ultimately, I guess it's best to just go with whichever sh dive shop or dive school that's closest to you or is available to take you on for training at your dive destination. Instead of worrying about um, which organization for you to get certified with ultimately my urge and recommendation for you is actually to look into the act the dive instructor or, or dive company and school that you're intending to sign up to do the course with look into reviews ask for instructor credentials um, so that you can understand the experience behind this dive center or dive instructor um, and just be comfortable with the fact that you're going into this course with someone that you can trust and who will also deliver you a quality, a, you know, quality product and quality training because ultimately scuba diving is an adventurous sport, uh, adventurous activity and can involve risks uh, that may be life-threatening if it's not managed properly. Um, and for some of you, especially beginners, complete beginners, the first dive, first few dives might be quite daunting. So you really want to be able to get trained by somewhere and someone who's going to put your safety first. Um, so I would worry about that most of all. So look into that, read reviews, get for friends referrals, for example, talk to dive centers, 
give them a call. I know most dive centers and dive instructors are going to be like, oh my God, Fizzy, you're adding more work for us. We've got to answer all these. Ask any questions, any doubts, anything you want to ask, just ask, call. Good dive instructors and good dive centers will take the time to give you the assurance and answer you, um, answer your questions um, instead of just brushing it off and saying, no, don't worry about it. Just come with us. We'll sort it all out, right? Um, so go with someone and somewhere that you really feel comfortable starting your dive training with. All right, now we've come to the third and last thing I wanted to highlight uh, for you to know before you get dive certified. Now, normally I try to do my safety stop series videos to make it short for like three minutes or something, but I think this is important. So I'm going a bit over time right now, but I'm hoping that I'm still giving you very uh, valuable information. Uh, but the last thing I wanted to talk about is what can you expect or what should you expect out of your dive training? So dive training is typically split into three elements. The first is your theory, yeah? Diving involves immersing yourself in the underwater realm. And this impacts you physically. The, the air you breathe, the, the equipment you use, the, the safety considerations you need to know. So all that has to be covered in theory first before you're taken into the water. This theory section can be done either via e-learning. Some schools offer that option so that it's easier for you. You can do it on your own time at home first before you go to the you know, training center to, to start the in-water skills. Uh, some can do on-site training, so you can pick whichever one that suits you the best. Uh, what you should not go for is someone, an instructor or dive center that just brushes it off. Because if anyone uh, at any time certifies you for scuba diving without making sure that your theory baseline is, and understanding is solid, you've been cheated of, of an education that involves your life and safety, right? Um, so this is important. Don't be daunted by the fact that there's a final exam at the end of it. This is, you know, typical of any uh, training modules, be it diving or, you know, sailing or engineering. It's just a, a check to see if you understand the concepts, right? If you don't, that's what the instructor is there for. They're there to answer all your questions and ensure that you understand all the diving concepts uh, and theory bits that you, you have to know, right? So if you fail your exam, I, I tell my students this all the time. If they fail, it's a failure on my part. Like I have not done very well in educating them about what they need to know because I'm supposed to be the expert and I've spent like three, four days with them teaching them how to do their theory, like what to understand. So if you fail your exam, it's your instructor's fault. <laughs> Just say that. So no stress, learn, absorb, and that's an important part. Uh, yeah, it provides your foundation for everything else. The next part of your training, you'll be guided through a shallow water skill circuit or confined water training. In this one, your instructor will take you to a controlled environment, usually a pool or a sheltered bay in the ocean, yeah, where at the start you can still stand in to, to perform the first few skills to get you used to the equipment that you're gonna uh, you're gonna use as a scuba diver as well as react to emergencies. It's gonna be a whole list of skills. The instructor will demonstrate and teach you step by step how to perform and execute. Once you've mastered all the skills in confined water, then you move on to part three and the final part of your dive training. And this is where all the fun happens, right? <laughs> Your instructor will take you under supervision to um, usually around four, minimum four, open water dives on actual dive sites where you start seeing reefs and corals and you know fish and all the good stuff. Yeah. Um, now these open water training dives are there so that the instructor can evaluate and assess your mastery of, of skills that has been taught to you and ability to react to the natural environment and dive safely and comfortably uh, underwater. Now, do note that all your in-water training activities involve very strict instructor-to-student ratios set by the certifying organizations that monitor training quality, uh, especially if it involves children under the age of 12. Uh, this is to ensure safety, obviously. There's also maximum depth limits yeah, you, they can't just take you to a 50 meter dive on your first dive, for example. So in order to be clear about what these guides and limitations are, look into the dive certifying dive agencies that you're signing up with, um, as well as talk to the dive centers to make sure that they do conform to the instructor to student ratios. 
And again, this is ultimately putting your safety first. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful in your scuba diving training journey and deciding whether to go for it or not. I say go for it. You're not going to regret it. You're going to love it. Like scuba diving is going to change your life. Once you've done it, oh, the ocean just changes you, okay? Um, so I hope you do enjoy your training. And again, if you found this video useful, feel free to share it with your friends or family who's also considering to get certified. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I'm more than happy to try and answer them. I'll go through my comments regularly, yeah? And um, maybe even do a video if it's a topic that's common enough. Uh, I'll probably do another video to answer them. And yeah, like, subscribe if you've enjoyed my channel. Otherwise, hope to see you underwater soon. If you see me diving in front of you someday, like, oh, that looks a bit like busy. Give me a wave. Come say hello. Give me a tap on my shoulder. I'm like, yeah. I'd like to welcome you to the underwater world. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.